I'm Florence Rabier. I'm the Director General here at ECMWF. So ECMWF is the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. Okay, so I'm a scientist in meteorology and I studied in Toulouse and Paris because um, most of my career has been done at Météo France, the French weather service. And so I started uh, working as an engineer, as we call them in France, but it's more as a scientist with a master degree. And then I worked for a couple of years in wave modeling, actually, and then did a PhD in data simulation at the University in Paris, which was about how to combine observations and model in order to get the best picture of the atmosphere, in order to get the best uh, predictions of, of the atmosphere. After, that, after my PhD, I came here to the Weather Center, to the European Weather Center for six years to work as a scientist on implementing a new method of data simulation. To, um, it's, it's a new method to use better satellite observations in particular. So this was a very ambitious program. It's a very cost-intensive method. And it was really a, a, re, a very innovative method worldwide. So we implemented some methods that were just developed at the universities and we implemented in real life weather models. And we were the first to implement that in 1997. And then after that, it was implemented in other world, worldwide centers. And then I returned to Météo France, where well, I, was, I'm, I was seconded from, uh, to work on applying this method to the use of observations, in particular from satellite observations. So I worked a lot in trying to include more and more satellite observations into the French weather model and to make the best use of all these satellite observations in order to improve the forecasts. And in particular, of these new, uh, this new instrument, YAZI, which is an interferometer on board a European meteorological satellite, which had so many more data that scientists didn't know how to handle them. So we had to develop methods and how do we choose the best information, etc. So I worked quite a lot on that in the scientific side. And then I... Um, I worked on a field experiment in Antarctica to actually validate the Yazi profiles uh, soundings uh, with some in situ observations. So this was a big international experiment where we launched some big super pressure balloon that were like 12 meter diameter balloons that were launched from the McMurdo base in Antarctica and that flew around Antarctica for something like 70 days on average and took measurements like were dropping sounds that uh, were measuring profiles of temperature and humidity and wind. And in the end, we had something like more than like 640 profiles in, in a couple of months, which was brilliant uh, for such an unexplored territory in a way. And I was then also coordinating the operational changes in, um, in Meteo France, the science developments that went into the weather models and that went into operations. So I had to, colla to collaborate a bit with the forecast department, evaluating the quality of our forecasts. Then in 2013, 15 years later, I came back to the European Centre as director of forecasts. This was a newly created department that um, was dealing about implementing forecasts, evaluating forecasts, etc. So, and after a couple of years, I became director general here. This was in January 2016. Yes, it, it was quite innovative. But uh, then, of course, when you go more into management, you also have to manage the less innovative stuff. But it's, uh, it, at the European Centre, we are dealing with quite a lot of uh, cutting edge development, which is what makes it extremely exciting. And I'm still very excited about the science being performed here, even, of co even if, I've, of course, I don't write scientific papers anymore. I've been speaking about that typically, the implementation of four-dimensional variational assimilation and this field campaign over Antarctica, which were probably some two of the highlights of my career that really um, were quite exciting and um, motivating. I thought they could be interesting for a wide audience. So I think my two PhD supervisors were an inspiration to me because they were very different, but also very complementary, and they really helped me guide my career in a way, mentally. So one was very scientist, the other one was quite a manager as well as a scientist, and really trying to push through some new developments in operations, which was quite interesting. Recently, as, um, as I came here, I had the pleasure to meet Catherine Sullivan, who was the administrator of no other US uh, National Administration for Atmosphere. And she was an astronaut as well in her beginning of her career. 
and I think uh, she was a fantastic uh, figurehead and uh, I really enjoyed speaking with her and I thought that's an inspiration. Thank you.